of Let's Talk About It. This is Susan Johnson, and I'm here with my co-host, Dennis O'Brien. And boy, have we got a great show for you this evening. We have some wonderful guests with us. We have our superintendent of Wyndham Public Schools. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, we also have uh, uh, the dual language program specialist, uh, Beth Brené, and uh, thank you so much, Tracy Youngbird and Beth, for being here today uh, to talk about so many things going on in the Wyndham Public Schools. And I have to say, the very first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that I saw in the Chronicle some wonderful awards that occurred for the Nadchok School, and how proud I am to be representing this town and having such great things happening in the Wyndham Public School system. Thank you for that kickoff and for the invitation to be here tonight. And yes, we'll start off with uh, letting everyone know that Natchaug Elementary School has been named as a Connecticut Association of Schools finalist for the coveted title of Elementary School of the Year. Um, so there's a site visit scheduled at the beginning of March, and um, we hope that from that site visit, there the school is actually named an Elementary School of the Year uh, under CAS. So we're very excited to have them just reach the finalist category. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. And, and for tonight, I want to just let you know that we're hoping to share some information about our dual language program, about the new parents' bill of rights, uh, and about uh, an update on Wyndham High School. And I brought with me our resident expert, as you mentioned, Beth Ann Brene. She is the director of equity and multilingual uh, education, uh, or EAM, the EAM department f in our central office. So she's going to be sharing lots of wonderful information about our programming. Uh Thank you so much for that. And I just want to say how proud I was to be working on making sure we have dual language uh, systems recognized at the state level. We have had a wonderful program here uh, in the Compañeros program, and it's been extended now through... Dos Rios. Dos Rios. Yeah, Dos Rios. And so, yeah, it's been right extended right through. And then it's also been recognized that <coughs> students that have certain accomplishments with respect to dual language get recognized with respect to the credit. And then now we have the uh, dual language patient uh, parents bill of rights. So it's, it's a wonderful thing that we passed last year. And I'm very excited about being able to talk about it. And I do want to say uh, Katina Caban Owen was supposed to be here today, a member of our Board of Education, but she, I'm sorry that you had a little injury and, and I'm hoping that you feel better. Better. And so we're thinking about you and sending you healing thoughts. <laughs> Absolutely. I okay. sent her a nice note, and uh, I'm looking to have her on real soon on the, on the show. We we need uh, some representation from the Board of Ed, too. Absolutely. And the administration does a great job. And uh, last time we had our uh, our assistant superintendent of schools yes. on, he did a marvelous job on very short notice. Mr. Weathers. Mr. Weathers. He's Pinch great. Hitting. He's great. He's a very yeah. personable guy. He's he sure very, is. Very, did very, very well on the radio. He could have his own show, actually. I tell him all the time it was the best decision I made when I took over as superintendent. Well, wonderful. You yeah. don't say that to everybody. I don't. Well, you, <laughs> you, know, you, you, are the, you are the fearless leader, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to be, you know, make sure that the staff is uh, knows they're appreciated sure. by you. Right, Matt? Right, Beth is going right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, great to have you, have you back on the show, Tracy and Beth. Great to have you on. I've heard a lot about you and all you do for Wyndham Public Schools, and... Very impressed, and I tell you, I uh, said it before, I'll say it again, there's nothing more important than education. Nothing. That's if I right. weren't a lawyer, I'd be a teacher. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I think it's so, just so important. The only way to save the world and save our country is through education. We have to support our public schools. It's never too late. That's yes, right. True never, story. That's right, it's never too late. We're, <laughs> we're just going to, you know, I, 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 I'm a product of the Britain Public Schools, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I owe so much to my kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you know, and so on, teachers. I, did, I, wasn't, a, I wasn't a great student, especially when they started assigning homework, because I wanted to be at the park playing ball all the time. And I said, what's this homework stuff? I'm supposed to be out playing I, ball. I believe and, that. And, and you believe it, right? We all believe I'm that. Not gonna so even, I'm not going to even follow up on that. But, yeah. but I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you, public schools, uh, you know, made me whatever I am today in a positive sense, along with my wonderful mother, my wife, and my daughter. Well, you yeah. know what? I just want to follow up on well, that. You're going you're to uh, interrupt uh, me. No, right. I, I was, you, I was you, done. I was I, actually I done. I, I, th I would have put a period at the end of that last remark. I did it put a period, period. There was a period, <laughs> there was, was a period a there. And, 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 else, no, and I, your I, turn, Susan. Thank you, Dennis. I do That's probably all I'll say all night. We've got these two experts here. No, that's... No, I just want people to know I'm here. 
You are. And, and I'm they supportive know of Wyndham they, Public Schools. Yeah, thank you big very much. Time, we big really time. appreciate that. But yeah, I did want to follow up on Beth's remark, Beth Renee's remark. It's never too late. And I think that that's one of the things about education. I think that one of the things that we think about is that, oh, you you go through, uh, you know, you're, you're right through to secondary school and post-secondary school perhaps and or whatever you do when you finish uh, high school. And then, um, and then that's it. But it's not. It never ends. Education never ends. And the idea that, well, maybe it didn't work out at first, but maybe you need to just be, find a way to continue your education. So there's all kinds of things to think about when you think about education. But today we're going to think about dual language and how great it is for brain development, how great it is for understanding the English language if you have another language to learn. And it's just an amazing thing. I know when I took Latin, I understood English so much better. Mm. So anyway, tell us a little bit about the update on the Wyndham, Wyndham High School renovation, because I know that that's coming along, and there's a lot of good remarks about that, too. Sure. You want to jump into Wyndham High School first? or Okay, oh, so well, cool. Wyndham High School, um, we just recently opened up the science labs, uh, the science classrooms, which oh, is really, really exciting. So they have an opportunity to sort of bring to life the science concepts that they're focused on up there. Um, we are... The students, uh, they, if you've, I don't know when the last time you were there, but there's a brand new uh, restaurant type kitchen that the culinary program uh, is use, using regularly. In fact, if Representative Curry was able to come uh, earlier in the week, we were going to have the students make him lunch, and you were going to be there as well with yes, us, I Susan. Was. Yes, so, yes. Um, we, that's something we're using regularly. The actual kitchen where they serve the meals is uh, going to have a soft opening, I think, at the end of next week. Uh, it is set up like a like a college uh, dining hall. It, it's really beautiful. Wonderful. So we're excited about that. Um, our 2D and 3D art classrooms are open now, um, and we're moving in the sort of the final phase of this project. It should be over by December 2024. It's currently on time and on budget. So That's we're amazing, very isn't excited. it? Yeah. And you have a wonderful chair of the building committee who I recruited. Mr. He, was the, well, he was the only person to do it. He, yes. he is so qualified, and, and he's such a great guy, and I, I'm, he's doing a wonderful job, and I'm just I'm happy with the committee. I'm happy with the whole project. I'm happy with Susan uh, contributed to it. Yes. This is great. We need to move on to talking about dual language. Yeah. But yes. thank you for the reimbursement rate before we jump on to dual language. We, oh. we love that 95% right. reimbursement. Sweet every so often I get a thank you for that yes. because every so often people say, well, how much is it going to cost? Yeah. And I say, well, we got a 95% reimbursement. So. Incredible. So it is. It's a like it never happens, but we Senator Flexer and I, we were able to pull that off. And, uh, you know, very, very. So thank you for that. I appreciate Absolutely. it. And now on to the dual language program here, uh, Beth Renee. Thank okay. you for your work. Sure. Let's hear some more. <laughs> I think I can make a transition out of this. Actually, there um, is a lot of cost efficiency in dual language education um, as compared to um, other forms of bilingual support. Our dual language programs are um, full classroom programs. So um, in terms of our two-way program and our one-way program, um, those are classroom teachers who are operating pre-K to 8 at this um, time. Compañeros, our two-way program, our 30-year program, mm -hmm. yes. operates preschool to grade 8. And Dos Rios is currently in grades K through 7 um, with um, more expansion into 7 next year. Wonderful. And, you know, so this is this is great. Have, um, as I mentioned in my initial remarks, the fact that they have success, uh, successful students with their language programs, they are recognized now for that uh, in their uh, learning achievements. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, sure. There's a, I would say um, there's a greater possibility for our students who are in dual language education to earn additional recognitions as they um, continue because dual language education allows students to stay in program um, beyond the, the time that they might be a classified English learner, for example. Um, they can stay in that program for as, as long as we have it. So if we grew the program up through high school, for example, they could still remain in the program. The, the goals of dual language education are very different from a transitional program. A tra transitional bilingual education program is meant for a very short amount of time or developmental amount of time um, to assist English learners in acquiring English um, and not really guaranteeing that we maintain their proficiency in their first language. Whereas in dual language education, we have the ultimate goals of developing proficiency at a high level in both languages and academic achievement in both languages. So content is taught in Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. um, and so as these students gain proficiency in both languages and academics, um, they continue on at a high level. It, when they reach the high school, they now have this opportunity in the state of Connecticut, for example, to earn a seal by literacy. 
Um, and so students in grades 10, 11, 12 can take a specific um, type of test, uh, or different tests actually are, are available, to earn this seal of biliteracy upon graduation. Some of them achieve it before graduation, and then they get the recognition at graduation. Mm, I would imagine that would help them with uh, post-secondary education in many, multiple places. Sure. I, I think a really neat thing that we're starting to see, um, even amongst some of our, our most recent recruits um, into the school system, are students who have the seal of biliteracy recognition now on their resumes. Um, and so that's been a really uh, a neat thing. Um, for sure, employers are looking for students. You know, in this um, time, where we're looking for students who have uh, bilingualism and biliteracy as a skill that is highly sought after. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're starting to see it now. We're seeing students grow up into adults, and they're carrying this um, accolade with them mm -hmm. on their resume. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's really excellent. And uh, it really gives the school, um, you know, other students probably who would love to also participate with the dual language program. I know that uh, your chairman of the Board of Education, Lynn Ide, all three of her, her uh, children all participated in the dual language program. Mm -hmm. And she's quite proud of their work and the fact that they came through uh, with that dual language recognition and uh, the fact that they have both languages now. Absolutely. Not only Lynn Ide, but Mark Doyle as well. They both had children in the program, and that sort of can lead into one of the pieces because our Compañeros program is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year, so oh. Beth can give you... Well, give you some information about I, that. I, I'm hearing that maybe I should be bringing a citation yes, to these Yes, that to could be. <laughs> so yeah. give her some yeah. details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Compañero celebrates its 30th anniversary, um, and we're having a – it's this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're having a big event on May 4th. Uh, we've reserved Jilson Square. Um, we Ooh. hope to invite uh, quite a few, obviously, um, students and families, um, the schools. So uh, really it's uh, Wyndham Early Childhood Center, North Wyndham, and uh, middle school will be featured. Um, students will be invited to, or, or grades will be invited to um, do some performances uh, in the celebration. Uh, a big announcement for us has been that we have invited two uh, pretty well-known uh, masters of ceremony. Uh, we have Madeline, Dr. Madeline Agrone, who oh. is the current superintendent of New Haven, um, but also a former principal here with us in, in Wyndham. Um, also a parent of a former compañero student. Um, she was also part of the Parent Advisory Council. As, and the other MC is Mark Doyle, uh -huh. uh, a current board member. And so we've, we've um, got them as a pair. And Mark also had students go through the program, was involved in its inception or at the early stages. Um, so I just thought they were uh, two great people to represent all of the history, really, that goes into this program. Um, so we'll have a number of special guests. There, you know, there are many directors that have contributed, many um, administrators, but many families and graduates who will be featured. Um, and so that's something to look forward to for us. So yeah, please so join us. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to stick course. it on my calendar <laughs> right away. So that's that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we're still in session on May 4th, so we'll have to, I'll have to probably. Well, it's, is it a weekend? It Saturday, like Saturday to Saturday. Saturday. Well, you know. Yeah. Say, we can do Saturdays. Sure we <laughs> Most can. of the time. Yeah, well, I mean. I will be there. I'll, I'll represent the family if you can't make it. A, a, yeah. uh, I know it's. No, a Saturday session, uh, at the end of session, they usually have a uh, budget budget Saturday. Oh, I thought they had a softball the, game. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to do your company Euros thing with That's the right. citations. No, you better, you better be there for the budget session. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll do the budget sooner. We have a speaker who is highly organized, and he, I think he'll want to get through the budget quickly. So oh, yeah. okay. it, might just, it might be bills, but you know, nevertheless, you got to have a Got to vote for all the bills. We've too. invited food trucks if that helps change. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. You could invite Matt Ritter too. Matt Ritter, has, invited, uh, Matt Ritter invited, has done legal work for, the, for the, the system, the school system. Mm. In fact, when I I was the one that put the application through the town council for the uh, addition for the improvements at uh, Wyndham High School, massive improvements, and uh, I called. I worked with Matt Ritter on it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I think that's. You know what? You've given me an idea. We should invite the whole general assembly. And then maybe oh. we'll get the day off. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that, but it would be nice to have Matt, Matt Ritter. If, if Matt you're not Ritter, busy while you got Jeff Curry, uh, who Jeff wants Curry, to come out, we're going to have to have chairman uh, of the education committee. And of course, we cannot forget our majority leader, Jason Rojas. Mm -hmm. So he also. East Hartford, yeah. Yeah, so it would be great. They're both from East Hartford, both uh, Jeff and Curry of course, and Senator Jason. Flexer. Of course, yep. Senator Flexer. We must have Senator Who helped Flexer. get the 95% reimbursement rate. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, yes. She took care of the Senate part. Yeah, I'll bet you she'll yeah. like uh, 
Send for a little Rosie mate. Oh, Rosie. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> like the Compañeros program, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. So I remember when the Compañeros program started. I thought it was longer than 30 years, really, because mm. John McGrath, who's my successor as the um, judge of probate, was on the Board of Education when that happened, and he was very proud of that. Sure. Yeah, he's still proud of it, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's great. That's great. That what a great idea to yeah. have a to celebrate something like that. It feels so. a little like putting a wedding together, but um, we're I, <laughs> well, I, well, it, it's okay. a, it's a lot of planning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I, uh, we've, done a, we, we, we've put events together. We're excited. And, and we're, we always worry. Oh, like, people, yeah. people, is anybody going to show up? You'll have a lot of. We'll people have there. a lot of people at this. Yes. We'll have a big crowd. Yeah, definitely yeah, not worried about attendance. Looking forward yeah. to it. Looking mm-hmm. forward to springtime well, too. Yeah, it's a great great time of year to have something like yeah. that it's just before the uh, end of the school year, too, but not at the end. So that's great before everybody goes off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to give us a little bit of a history on that because I know I think it started, well, you said it started 30 years ago. So mm-hmm. so let's go back in time. And it was the when I first uh, was elected, uh, the dual language program was just in the North Windham School. Mm-hmm. If you could just uh, tell us uh, how we got uh, to uh, expand that and make it so that it's all now the students have the chance to continue this all the way through high school. Tell us a little bit about how that happened. And yeah, we don't have the high school um, uh, piece just yet. I mean, that would oh, be a dream for us futuristically, okay, I think. Okay, okay. Um, right now we are pre-K-8. Uh, I, I won't go into all the like minute details, no, but okay. um, over the 30-year history, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the Compañeros program has, has existed at various grade levels. Um, and I'd say it's it's been most stable K through five. Mm-hmm. Um, and for v- a number of different reasons, it has expanded down to preschool and up to grade eight and then back down again and then grown back up. Um, but I would say we're in our probably our most stable time um, historically um, in quite some years. Um, right now we have really good support. We have uh, very strong um, staff, uh, strong support inside the school district as well. Um, and so we have been pretty stable in, in Compañero's existence pre-K to 8. But I think what you're also talking about is we've, we've added our one-way program. So the one-way program, Dos Rios, is um, specifically for English learners who are Spanish speakers. And what you're seeing right now is that Dos Rios reached um, grade 6 in full. Mm-hmm. And so now the two programs have come together and converged in the middle school. Um, and when that happens, um, we, we've made one program. Um, and actually some really great benefits come of that. One is that you you have a co- kind of rebalancing of students with high proficiency in Spanish and English. Um, the student is, it will now still be a two-way program in the middle school, meaning we have English speakers learning Spanish in addition to Spanish speakers learning English. Um, the students actually, one of our highlights that we brought tonight was that the students and parents in the spring uh, of grade six, um, they would have been grade five last year, were asked to propose a number of possible names for the middle grades program so that we give it its own um, sort of program identity. Um, mm-hmm. As these two programs come together and converge, we don't want to call that uh, the program by just one of those names. And so parents and students were um, asked to propose some names in the spring uh, at what we call Charles y Chocolate, which is like a, a parent advisory kind of meeting. And we held them at all of the elementary schools. And so we had, I think it was like 22 names that were put forth. Mm-hmm. And students who are now in grade six were the ones that just recently voted on the name. And so they've decided on um, Compañeros Unidos. And Compañeros Unidos. Unidos. So it's like um, United. United. And, and so they've sort of preserved a part of the, one of the program names and still extended it. Um, and it was, it, it won by an overwhelming vote. So it oh, feels okay. pretty good to have a student selected or student driven program name. Um, and so that that's just good. happened. And it's going to give them such a sense of pride uh, mm-hmm. to know that students that came up through this program uh, helped name it. And mm-hmm. it's just that participation is uh, really a great thing for the students to feel like they have some ownership in these programs. And, um, you know, I always stress the fact that not only is it great for brain development, it also is great because we have an international economy now. So mm-hmm. it's not like it's just here. It's, uh, you know, having the capacity for another language is, is something that helps people with, the, with our international economy. It helps uh, grow the economy that we need to, to have. So it's, it's a wonderful thing uh, that, that is occurring with the dual language yeah, we programs. Did, we just did a um, podcast actually recently. Did you? With, with, um, yes. Yeah, we have a podcast internally now and mm. uh, on our website. Uh, we did an episode with, with Dr. Youngberg and 
um, we highlighted not only like the the fiscal and sort of economic advantages for students down the road of mm -hmm. being bilingual and biliterate, but also, um, and I think this is really, really important to stress here in Wyndham, um, the cultural and family benefits um, that come with this, right? Are, the majority of our students have some kind of bilingual profile when they enter our schools. They might be balanced bilinguals, they might be heritage learners, but along that entire continuum, many of our students um, come with uh, exposure or really good proficiency in Spanish. And to have a dual language program that preserves that and also um, builds upon it and, and strengthens proficiency over time is sort of a phenomenal thing for our little community, which is really unique in the northeastern corner of Connecticut. Um, and we uh, even were talking about, you know, one of the highlights is that students can talk to family members of different generations, you know, and um, there is a, always a fear, I think, in many families of a loss of language uh, over time. And it, in this program, students have a chance to maintain, right, something that they, they originally entered our schools with. And instead of um, transitioning them to English, this is not what this program does. This program really um, takes an asset that our students and families bring to our schools. Absolutely and maintains and develops it further. And that, that's something that I think that we should be most proud of. I agree with that completely because really diversifying how we think about the world, how we think about different cultures, just it makes, uh, it makes everybody uh, much more knowledgeable about how things could work because we may create a different way of working for one, one group of people that have one type of language and then they, other people have another way of uh, having their development of their, their societies and communities. Understanding those things is really important for us to have good cultural interaction throughout the, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So it is an international thing and it's uh, something that, you know, maybe we'll, we'll also kind of get connected with the UN at some point because I think that when I took international law, I, I was really fascinated with the UN and how it works and, and uh, mm -hmm. so it is, uh, I think it's a, it's a great thing to, uh, to really expand the vision for all these things and, and it brings more economic development back to the town. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I like the fact that this kind of thing will uh, enhance family harmony. Mm -hmm. The younger generations, the older generations, especially mm -hmm. now, because cha things change so fast now, faster mm -hmm. than they ever have historically, and there's a, the, it's very easy for there to be a gap between uh, grandparents like me of mm -hmm. my age and, and younger children, sure. and that's that's not easy. And, and if there's a language uh, issue, and that, that makes it even harder. Sure. So I think this is, is wonderful for families to be, uh, you know, more stable. Uh, you know, in terms of getting along. I've, I've always said, you know, when I talk about politics, I always say there's politics everywhere, even in families. Yeah. And, and you know, and there, yes. are, there is family politics, and it's better if you can all communicate together and everybody understands what everybody else is trying to say. So that's my two cents. Well, that's a, that's a good two cents there, Dennis. It's always good to have somebody on the panel who, who is like every man uh -huh. and ask the kind of questions that somebody who he really doesn't know much about the topic mm -hmm. will that's ask. That's, 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 what I'm, that's what I'm here for. Well, I, that's why we do the radio show. We do the radio show so people can uh, have an idea of what we're doing and right. how these things work. And also, so I, another question about the program and how we're doing is, is, is are there other people trying to exp uh, get their children into it? And what's the process for getting sure. your children into the uh, dual language programs? Right. So um, Compañeros has always been a, a lottery-based program. Mm -hmm. It is still a lottery-based program. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually is one of the reasons why we also created Dos Rios, which is the other program for um, English learners, uh, we just we wanted to be able to offer dual language education to more than just the number of seats that we have um, in the two-way program. And so Dos Rios really um, not only gives the option um, to families who are, are learning English to join in a, a sim very similar program. They're similar in all ways, except that in the one-way program, we don't have the English learners who are learning Spanish, right? The English dominant kids learning Spanish as a second language. Um, and so... Um, so Compañeros is lottery based. Dos Rios is really um, open to all students who qualify as identified English learners. Ah. And so our, that program will continue to expand with our, with our population, um, which is why it now exists in all four elementary schools, K through five, and at the middle school it is in its first full year in sixth grade, and we do have um, a class in seventh grade that was from Natchog, who was the first rising class last year. So. And as the district has those conversations about the elementary consolidation project and what we hope to happen in the very near future, these programs will exist in that new space. It, they're not going away. It's part of who we are. Exactly. And it's uh, and I'm going to 
go right now to our uh, sponsors, and we thank them very much for sponsoring our show. Uh, so this is Susan Johnson. I'm here with my co-host, Dennis O'Brien, and we will be right back with uh, Tracy Youngbird, our superintendent of schools, and Beth Brené, uh, who is uh, doing the dual language programs in the Wyndham Public School System. Welcome back, everyone. This is Susan Johnson. I'm here with my co-host, Dennis O'Brien, and our very special guest this evening. We have with us the superintendent of schools, Tracy Youngberg, and also we have Beth Brené, uh, who is uh, the, the leader of the uh, dual language programs here in the Wyndham Public School System. And so I just wanted to say this is great to have you here to uh, tell our listeners all about uh, how we have we are really doing great things for our students here in Wyndham and how we're really a leader in Connecticut and a leader nationally in these issues. Absolutely, and just I just want to make a point of saying, um, you know, Beth, as our Director of Equity and Multilingual Education, she won't say this, but she's, she's definitely part of the reason why the program continues to be as strong as it is. She has a really strong department. She leads it very well, um, has established a, a core set of goals to improve the department, and has been working really hard um, in support of our kiddos. So I just want to shout out to her. I, I, she has more information to share with you, but I know she won't recognize that she's part of why it is so strong right now. Here's another sports analogy for you. You know, I always <laughs> believe that to be a great manager, you have to have great players. Absolutely. And, and I think Tracy Youngberg, our superintendent, understands that as well as anybody, including me. And I think Beth Renee also is a softball player and uh, understands <laughs> those things as well. At the end of this, I hope we have a team. Yes. Yeah, right. but we have, okay, Beth Renee team. is a former third baseman. Yeah. Former? Uh, yeah, former. Uh, yeah, I'm not playing right now. Thanks. Okay, but, Tracy uh, Youngberg <laughs> is a former first baseman. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all we need Amongst is a short, other positions. short stop and a second baseman. That's right. Get the yeah. infield together. There was a, <laughs> there was a, a woman uh, from Connecticut, Joni Joyce, who's one of the famous all-time softball players in the, in the world, who struck out Ted Williams. In, a, in an exhibition game, and Ted Williams could not hit her at all, and she would she had a team, you know, there a pitcher, shortstop, first baseman, and catcher. That's all she had. Yeah. She would just strike people out, and that's, you know. Well, anyway, I think that. Well, I just on that note, I just want to say that I think that having. Uh, Girls in sports and women in sports uh, really uh, is a great thing, and it's a great uh, part of education, and it teaches people how to work together as a team, and that's what I think the, uh, one of the things that I've been focused on. I'm too old to have had a school experience where I had team sports uh -huh. uh, because we didn't do that. We didn't let we, females do much of anything except go to the class to learn to sew, which I could already do, or cook, and I could do that too. So I didn't need those <laughs> things. <laughs> All right. <laughs> In right. any event, let's get back to dual language programs. Tell us some more about uh, how this how how this is uh, working here, in uh, and how the the kids can participate. The families are. Uh, are participating as well. Sure. Right now is our actually we're in lottery season, um, uh -huh. so the compañeros lottery is in full swing, um, and that will finish up towards the end of um, February and um, be announced in March. And so um, we're we're preparing. This is the time of year where we start preparing for the next year. Um, we. I mean, we do this, this isn't like a new thing. This is every single year at this time. Um, so parents, I think many in the community know the general time when things happen, but we try to advertise uh, a lot. Um, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Right, posting everywhere mm -hmm. and um, getting um, radio ads out about the exact information to do with the lottery because it is a very specific process you have to follow. Um, mm -hmm. You have to do an informational um, uh, meeting, so to speak, and, and learn about it because it does involve commitment from families. Right. It's not just a commitment right. from the school district. Um, families have to know a bit about um, bilingualism, how second language acquisition works, how the dual language program functions. And the commitment is that you want your students to stay in this program as long as possible because it does take a number of years to develop really strong language and academic proficiency in both languages. So um, so that's, that is a requirement. It's something that we talk to our families about very openly. Um, yeah, so yeah. just one when, when thought about that. And, uh, one of the things that you hear about is the fact that what are we what are we doing? I mean, this is historic stuff, and maybe we're not doing it as much uh, now. But why are we starting uh, teaching students a language when they're in high school instead of when right. they're young? Because the brain is uh, so much better at learning a second language or multiple languages when they're when they're little, as opposed to uh, waiting till you get to high school when your when your your language uh, skills are are so somewhat hardened in your in how your brain works. Yeah, I, I, I think we, we were kind of talking about this a little earlier um, today or yesterday, and it all blurs into one day, but um, <laughs> we were talking a bit about, you know, 
you, you don't really, so many school districts are kind of, uh, or who cannot in, um, implement a bilingual education program or a dual language education program are sort of stuck in this position of offering some bilingual supports to students, um, growing their English proficiency. And so the students suffer through language loss during their elementary and middle school years. And then comes high school when we ask them to then take a world language, which makes almost no sense. And here in Wyndham, with our population, it makes, almost, it makes no sense at all why you wouldn't um, take advantage and, and offer families this route to maintaining a language they already have exposure to and, and some proficiency in and, and continue it through the high school level where students can actually achieve a very high level of proficiency. Um, so why would you um, sort of have it go away and then come back? So here we cannot afford that. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yes, and students learning at, at an earlier age, obviously, um, is, is to their advantage. Did you major in foreign language in college? Um, actually, yeah, I double majored, um, but in English and, and French. So my, okay. my, my heritage language is French. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little... Yeah, when I, my experience was that they, I started uh, studying uh, foreign languages in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. uh, the two, sure. I had Latin and then French. Mm -hmm. yep. And I don't know, I, I would have taken Spanish if it were today. Of mm -hmm. course. Yep. But, but they, they were pushing Latin and French back mm -hmm. then. And I, I agree with Susan. I think the Latin really helped me a lot to uh, learn English, mm -hmm. to right. learn English, you know, declension. And, I mean, and, and, you know, and grammar, mm -hmm. because I didn't know much about English grammar at all until I took Latin. Because yeah. Latin is a structured language. I don't know. They teach Latin anymore? Um, not. We we're, we're not no, teaching it currently. No, it's really a dead language, right? Yeah, it's, 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 a a hard, yeah. it's very hard to find a Latin teacher. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, right, not right. all schools and districts will commit to it because it's, it's hard to sustain. Yeah, and you won't find uh, too many parents who are, who are clamoring for uh, Latin right. education. I'm sure. Well, I just yeah. want to say one thing about that because it's very disappointing that they don't teach Latin anymore. Uh, and that's not just because I'm old school. When we were in Germany, Dennis, you remember when we were in Germany and we went I to remember, see the Susan. mayor? I was, uh, mayor, I was with you. Uh, in, in <laughs> the still, bad Soden mayor. My, my and I said to uh, Bad Soden mayor, said I, so I said I was all excited about being there because, you know, I was in the education committee and we were doing uh, talking about how to, uh, you know, in, uh, integrate languages more. And so I said, well, what do you do in Germany? And they, he said, and he spoke wonderful English, by the way. He spoke French, English, German. He spoke everything. And he, he could, yeah. but I said, well, what do you do? And he said, well, first of all, you know, we start off, of course, with German. And then we go to Latin. Mm -hmm. And then we go to English. And then they can go to a third language after that. And, and it seemed like it made so much more sense than, because uh, they're Romance languages. Uh, if you're in Europe, uh, you're going to have a better way of learning the other languages with a base of Latin. And so we'd have, I think, a, a step up if we took the Latin. But I don't know why we got rid of Latin. It doesn't make any sense to me because so many of our words are based in that area of language, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just another thing that uh, has been taken away, uh, and I won't go into all the things that have been I taken have away. Go, please go right ahead. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I think there's so many things now that in the curriculum that are required that were not required back when I was in school, that which is ancient history. Me but, too. Uh, you know, you can only fit so many, only, the day is only so long, the work day is only so long, students are only there so long, you only have so much time. So it's very, very hard. I mean, in Europe, it's it's much more important, I think, for them to learn different languages because they're they're, they're like states. Those stuff, those those nations are small, mm -hmm. and they people a lot of people live near the border, and they they automatic they will they will be exposed to more than one language yeah. just in mm -hmm. living okay. daily living. Yeah. The drivers so, for communication are, are, are yeah, no quite. That's right. very very well said. The drivers for communication are very strong. I think it's great, and I think we could learn a lot from them in terms of, as Susan suggests, in terms of what, how we approach foreign languages. Mm -hmm. For one thing, start younger. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. But a anyway, uh, I had a question about uh, the um, magnet school. Is the magnet school included? I don't think so. Magnet mm -hmm. school it, within its operating plan has um, they had a plan uh, for world languages, and so they still offer Spanish as a world language. Okay. Um, and they offer it K through eight. Yeah. Um, so we have a teacher there who teaches Spanish. Um, it's taught more like a special in their case. Sure. Uh -huh. um, rather than a full bilingual program oh, right, it's, it's, right, right. right so it's not quite that they used to have mandarin, mandarin. there um so mandarin and spanish were both offered yeah. um, and my last stint in Wyndham, we put mandarin in place and so we had mandarin in the middle school high school and barrows for uh, for a particular number of years um, and well, right now we're back to spanish senator Austin, who was the uh, chair of the appropriations committee on the senate side right here in sprague was uh you know in the army what, what was she she specialist in the Mandarin language. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's in high demand, right? Oh, Mandarin, yeah. Arabic, Spanish. Yeah. Those are the big ones yeah. right now. Portuguese and ASL are other ones that have great interest. Yeah, she was moment. assigned yeah. to the Presidio in California where the, it's foreign language uh, mm-hmm. uh, or oriented. Yeah, I did a year in China. You did? Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, um, my. I, before I, pl- you know, I wasn't planning to come back to the U.S. So it was like a, um, my career intention was to be a, an EFL teacher, you know, uh-huh, English as a foreign uh-huh. language teacher abroad and travel the world for my whole life. And things mm-hmm. changed. Yeah. It's hard to stay away. Yeah, it's hard. Connecticut's a... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Connecticut good. is a great place. It's a good yeah. economic it is like Especially Wyndham. Especially Wyndham. Oh, right? I'm, right, I'm right back in my Go hometown Wyndham. area. Yeah. This, is, this is where I grew up next to, you know, I grew up in Canterbury and... Oh, um, you did? Yeah, so I ended up coming home. Yeah. Yeah, you're right in the district. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and, and the, the well, Senate district, you know, Fletcher's, <laughs> Senator Fletcher's <laughs> district. Anyway, yeah, uh, you have some uh, goals for the future. I mean, you, just, you talked about it to some extent, but, you know, like the high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, anything else that you have in mind, uh, you know, in terms of... Uh, you know, um, a wish expanding. List. <laughs> yeah. There's closures. always a wish list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's always a wish list. Um, yes, yes. Sure, and sure. The truth is around, um, you know, language proficiency. You want it to grow and keep going as, as far as you can take it yeah. um, because it's not, you know, if you don't practice, you lose it, right? right. And, and we don't want right. students, that, I think that we've been very clear in our commitment um, in recent years, and we don't want students to lose their proficiency. Um, yeah. And for certain, it's it's needed in the, in the local community and global community. Um, so I would say that, yeah, establishing, if we could expand, um, dual language education, um, minimally sort of into ninth grade. Um, and I say ninth grade first because the certifications function through ninth grade. Yeah. So in terms of structural organization, that really helps. Um, right. but if we could, um, extend it into the high school and maintain it at the high school level, that would be, uh, I think a huge win for our community. Um, not just for me and my programs, right. And my staff, yeah, but, right, but really for the community and yeah. our students, um, You'd be more certain that the learning that that, that was that was had in the earlier grades continued on throughout throughout, sure. throughout life. Yeah, and not only like the students who entered in our, our lottery based program, but our English learners who are benefiting from uh, true dual language education. Um, I just we have a lot of uh, new arrivals that come to our high school, yeah. and um, they they have certain sections that are supported really well. If we could offer them more bilingual sections of of content area, you know. Um, teaching that that would be a great advantage for some of our students. Yeah. Yeah, there are so many businesses businesses in town that I am certain sure. employ graduates of your bilingual program. Mm-hmm. No question. And, and and I think they're they're in high, you know great demand. Mm-hmm. It's a great sure. it's a great way to uh, get, you know break into the the job market and, yeah. to, and to do very well in the, with a career. We just celebrated. No just going to say we have actually. Go yeah, ahead. You, you first. No, no please. No. <laughs> you go ahead. Uh, we were just talking before we started the show, actually, about uh, some of our um, staff members who are graduates now of our, pro- our own programs and now are teachers in our programs. Wonderful. And that's just, when things come full circle, it's it's a really a nice internal celebration. I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. Yeah, that's absolutely. Great. That's mm-hmm. great news. Yeah. I think that I think that Wyndham High has got, had sent an awful lot of kids on to, uh, you know, great careers Absolutely. In, in the world, not, not only here, but, every, you know, in other places. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, you know, we want them to stay here. But, uh, you know, <laughs> people are going to go where they're going to go. Yeah. But, but you know, your job is to prepare them for, you know, for life. Go sure. Whippets. Yeah, yeah, go Whippets is right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I you got that. say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, cool. Very good, very good. So, you know, I so, so you're focused on dual language, and, and we have the, as we mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show, the Parents' Bill of Rights with respect to the, uh, mm-hmm. the students uh, being making sure that people who have uh, another language that isn't their home language actually are able to uh, make sure that they have the right training and process uh, involved. And I just wanted to know, you know, this, of course, fits in beautifully with that. Bill of Rights, but tell us a little bit about, you know, how that works and how parents are informed about the Bill of Rights, and I'm very proud to have voted for this, and uh, <laughs> Representative Curry and uh, everybody in the Education Committee pushed really hard for it, and uh, it was something that, you know, the, the legislature liked a lot, so. Yeah, so the, the formal title is the Parents' Bill of Rights for mm-hmm. um, English Learners slash Multilingual Learners. Yep. Are, are, um, this, this document is a newer document, right? It, it mm-hmm. was just voted um, into legislation. Right. But a uh, form of it existed previously. Yeah. And it was through the work of multiple advocacy um, agencies and, and sort of a coalition of them. 
um, that it really became part of the legislation. Um, and so some of what is, actually most of what is contained in this Bill of Rights is actually not new rights or new information, but it is summarized and sort of elevated. Uh, I like the word illuminated. It was our, our state English learner consultant uses the word illuminated. Uh -huh. um, all of these rights are really captured in this new document in one place and very friendly language. And the legislation now requires that districts post it on their website and send it at home to families. And so by creating a document like that, that all, um, you know, all of the districts in Connecticut must post and translate and hand out, um, I think families can only become more aware of their rights. Uh, the kinds of things captured in the document are not only about programming or supports, but also rights to translation, rights to um, interpretation at meetings, um, rights to an orientation at the school in the language you best understand. Um, and so many of the things that are bulleted or numbered in the document already existed in a number of other laws, like um, Plyler versus Doe and um, the Civil Rights Law. You know, it's pretty much it's Title Six and it's mm -hmm. um, ESTA Titles Three and uh, three and one. Um, mm -hmm. So all of these different laws already existed, but parents don't necessarily have the information about, you know, bullet oh, yeah. points and laws um, at their fingertips. And so to have it in this one document, mm -hmm. I, I think it presents a great advantage. It, it, it does certainly put pressure, I think, on districts that maybe aren't as well prepared um, or who don't have such big populations and haven't been um, putting this information out yeah. um, as often. But in our case, I feel like we're very well prepared yes. to put this information out sure. um, because we've been we've had large um, language programs for a long time, and so for me as a director of language programs, it really only helps me um, mm -hmm. put out there what what is important for families to know and what is important for our schools to be prepared to do. Excellent. So I, I yeah go ahead. Yeah, this has got to be really important for uh, f uh, new arrivals mm -hmm. and uh, you know people who. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I could ask you a question about what you, yeah, and I'm sure you could answer it, about the extent to which, um, you know, kids and parents coming from the various places that they come from, that, uh, that where Spanish is the, their principal language, and, you know, of course, Puerto Rico is one, it's mm -hmm. not a, another country, but it is, mm -hmm. you know, are, are they learning en English in their schools down there? Are they learning English in other, in Mexico and other places like mm -hmm. that? And how, how, how well are they prepared to even, you know, begin to understand this you know, if it isn't if, if it isn't provided if information about the program is not provided to them mm -hmm. in the language that they're accustomed to using sure, so I, that's why this is really important right I think this document I think our, our interpretation services and translation also we we all we're really kind of blessed because our community is part of our school system and so oh, yeah. we have a number of internal staff members who provide this kind of service on a regular basis um, and I'm not just like, so we're not just talking about like a, an at the ready language um, service that is through the phone or anything like that. We, we yeah. have a number of human people, beings, human right? beings that are available. Yeah. And then we complement it with things like a, a service if we need it, um, sure. or especially for languages that are lower in incidence. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know, I feel like we, we're prepared. Um, can we always build better structures and processes and and strengthen everything that we offer absolutely i think any district would say that it's they true can almost yeah. anything yeah sure. so there's always room for improvement mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. getting them the information is is like you said the the critical piece and i think we do a good job of that within our programs and i think this bill of rights um, really makes the district strengthen its processes yeah how many openings do you have i mean how many how many how many students can you accommodate in these programs uh, right now we're about 750 students in our combined dual language programs Wow, that's great. I just want to give you, we're down to our last couple of minutes, and this has been great. So I want to give each of you a chance to just give a little summary and talk about the application for the lottery for the dual language program uh, coming up for next year. little plug for yeah. the lottery. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and now is the time, so don't don't wait. Yeah. Um, if you or your family are interested in applying to lottery, you want to um, go to our website, and there are, there are a number of pop-ups and things that direct you, um, you know, as to where to go. Um, you'll fill out application, you'll watch an informational session, um, and then your, your piece will be done. We have people in the office who check in with, with folks to make sure that, they've, um, that we've answered your questions or if you leave a message, we can get back to you. Um, and so the, the process, I think, itself is, is 
fine if you if you contact us through our webpage. And it's a Wyndham Public School webpage. Yep, yep. You just go to Wyndham Public Schools and you'll see the the lottery. The lottery advertised right away. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, I get. I want to just thank uh, both of you. I want to thank our superintendent of schools, Tracy Youngberg, and also Beth Brene, who is in charge of the English language learning programs that we have. Our dual language program, which is way uh, far superior to most anywhere else in the state. And uh, like I just can't. <laughs> like the sounds of that. Yeah. And thank you for your amazing work <laughs> and, and the great things that you do for the students here at the Whitman Public Schools. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was a real pleasure to have you both here today. Hope you'll come back soon. It's really, we really love to have people from uh, Whitman Public Schools on the air. And it's, I think it's important for the community to know as much as they possibly can sure. about what's going on. Not only the, the younger p folks, but he, you know, even the old folks like me. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep coming back if you keep inviting us. Uh, we'll do that. We great opportunity. You you pretty much an open invitation. Oh, yeah. sounds good. As long Perfect. as we don't have a booking already set up. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Dennis right. O'Brien with Susan Johnson. We've been talking to Tracy Youngberg, our wonderful superintendent of schools, within the public schools. And Beth um, Brunet. 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 Beth Brunet, who is. Uh, She's the, wow. direct, she the director the of equity and multilingual education. And, this, and the star of today's and show. The absolute oh. star of today's show. Agreed. Okay, thank you so much. We'll be back next week with another great show.